Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Introducing Kagopsis Deathpop in the Cloud. Before we begin the session, um, the, today will last about 45 minutes and we'll be sending out the recording link by email afterwards. Time permitting, we'll be having a question and answer session at the end. There's a question panel on the right where you can type and submit your questions at any time throughout the webinar today, so please feel free to do so. Also, at the end of today, we'd be grateful if you could complete our short survey, which will pop up. This will help us with our future webinars. And finally, just to let you know, you're in listen-only mode, so we can't hear you. So to introduce us today, my name is Demel Zapata. I work in the business development team here at CADCorp, and I predominantly work with local and central government customers, helping them make the most from their GIS investment. My co-presenter today will be Simon Parker, who will provide our live demonstration. These are the points we'll be covering, starting with a little bit about CADCorp, because I know some of you listening are, are new to CADCorp. Um, the focus will for today, we'll be discussing Kegopsys desktop in the cloud. I'll be providing some background, what it includes, how it works, etc. And Simon will show you in, in practice how it works. After Simon's demo, I'll run through a customer case study, options available to you, and the many benefits this service offers. And finally, as I said, we'll round up by answering some of your questions at the end. So a little bit about CADCorp, we're UK based and we focus on the development and delivery of our product CADCorp SIS, which includes web, mobile and desktop GIS applications. We work across various sectors, these that you see on screen and more, and so we sell directly in the UK and Ireland and through our partner network worldwide. So I thought we'd start today with a poll to find out a little bit more um, about our audience. And I will just launch that. So, does your organization have a cloud first strategy? Yes, no, don't know. Feel free to click on the uh, little circles there to give us some answers. And as those results come in, I'll uh, talk to you about the results. So, what have we got? We've got coming in around 20% yes, 40% no, and the rest don't know. Okay, that's that's good good to know. Um, cloud first IT strategies um, have have been around a little while, but they are beginning to um, take off um, specifically in um, um, public sector organisations. So. I'm just going to close that one. We'll have a second one. Is your organisation considering investing in cloud services? <clears throat> Excuse me. Is your organisation considering investing in, in this service, a desktop in the cloud service? Yes, no, or unsure. We only released this service uh, last month, so expecting you to find out a little bit more. So we're about 40% yes, 5% no, and the rest of you unsure. So I expect most of you are looking to find out a bit more information today, which is hopefully what we will provide you with. I'm just going to close that poll down. Thank you for answering those questions. So an introduction for today so we're aware that cloud first strategies and digital transformation policy policies are influencing gis procurement um, and there's the substantial benefits to be gained from adopting a pre-configured cloud model um, because of this there's been rapid adoption of cloud hosting technology as an alternative or actually alongside traditional on-site software so what we're talking about today is an alternative to installing and managing SIS desktop on, on your PCs or, or laptops. So I thought I'd give you um, a little bit of history in terms of the CADCorp cloud journey. Um, for some time now, um, various CADCorp software products, mainly web mapping has been available in the cloud. So Diagnosis web map, notice board, 
And there's also been a number of CACORP data services, Ordnance Survey Background Mapping, for example, provided as WMS, WMTS, but also OS Master Map Topographic Vector Service, which gives you easy access to the latest vector master map within CACORP products, and also other uh, customer-defined map data products, for example, aerial imagery. Also, spatial database services um, provided in the cloud uh, for customers to load and manage their own business data. Um, the first one we launched was PostGIS, and then more recently, SQL Server. So, Sys Desktop, specifically in the cloud, has been added in May this year. Um, and whilst we've installed in the cloud previously, um, it as it provides our core data administration function. This is a distinct service in its own right, and it really completes the, bit, the last big part in the cloud um, journey, linking all of our products up. So what is CACOPS's desk in the cloud, desktop in the cloud? It's a managed service providing access to a centrally hosted desktop GIS environment via either a virtual desktop application or within a web browser. So there's a, a couple of options there. Because of this, it's not restricted to a Windows operating system. It could be Apple or Android or indeed any other device to use desktop on. So the service includes um, the software, CACOPSYS Desktop. It's hosted on Microsoft Azure, so we're backed by all the uptime guarantees that Azure provide. The service also includes cloud storage. It includes hosted uh, Ordnance Survey map data service. It includes support and also application health checks and monitoring resources. This, is, this service is all about managing your corporate desktops on your behalf in a controlled environment. So how does it work? So our technical services team will install it, set it up, maintain it, provide you with access instructions and named user accounts. And that's really all you will need. Um, we can provide training if needed, but this is the same product we all know and love. So training is not, not a requirement if you're an existing user. Right, over to Simon to show you in practice how easy it is to use. So I'll just swap over to Simon. Thank you, Demelza, and good morning. Uh, so my demonstration is going to show how easy it is to work with CADCOP SIS desktop in the cloud. So a significant benefit of using SIS desktop in the cloud is increased accessibility. So it's quick and easy to set up for remote and flexible working as no specialist hardware or resources are required. So I'm going to show you how you can connect to SIS desktop. And as Demelza mentioned, there are two methods to choose from. You can connect as a virtual desktop application or via a web browser. Whichever method you prefer, we recommend a stable internet connection with a minimum speed of five megabits per second. Now, the first option I'm going to show you is the configuration of a remote desktop application on your client machine. And this will require Microsoft Windows 10. You'll only need to run this process once. To set up the connection, you need to go to the remote app and desktop connections item in control panel. When we click to add a new connection, and we then need to add a URL provided by CADCOP to connect to the service. So I'm going to copy and paste this from my second screen. The following window will notify you that the connection is ready to be set up. And then after a short loading screen, we're then shown the Microsoft sign-in page. CADCOP will provide a user account for every user. So I'm just going to copy and paste my credentials again from my other screen. So first of all, we just add the username. And then we need to add the password.
Once the login details have been accepted, I simply just need to uncheck uh, this box uh, or allow my organization to manage the device and apply this to this application only. So once the um, uh, sign-in has been successful and we return to the remote app and desktop connections window, there is now um, a summary of that connection that we've created. And that concludes the initial setup that you need to perform. So I'm now ready to run Sys Desktop in the cloud for my desktop client. So if I go to the start menu, there's a new folder called CADCorp, uh, Remote App Desktop Connection. And within that, we've got the, the, the Sys Desktop 9 um, option to launch the application. You'll be asked to confirm your user account credentials one more time. Uh, and then once validated, CADCorp Sys in the cloud will load and you'll be able to begin your work. But before I launch the application, I want to show you the second connection method. So the second option is to connect via a web browser. So I'm going to launch Google Chrome. This connection method is suitable for users who are running an older version of Windows, that is anything older than version 10. And for those users who uh, might not be using a Windows device, such as a Mac device, for example. CADCOP will provide a connection URL to the service. And my browser has remembered the user account that I logged in with previously, so I can select that account and proceed to enter my password on the following dialog. And these are the same details I used for the setup of the virtual desktop application. So once I've clicked sign in and my credentials are validated, I'm now in the web client where I can launch um, the Sys desktop application. And then you get the option to either allow or deny access for copy and paste from your clipboards um, and to use your own printer. So it's now making that connection to Sys Desktop. And then a prompt will appear to ask for my credentials again. And this is my first time connecting, so I asked it to remember my credentials from my previous session. And then when I hit submit, CADCOPSIS desktop will start loading for this session. And once it has finished loading, I can then begin to use the software. And for those of you who are familiar with version 9 of the software, this is the interface you see um, at the beginning. So connecting via the browser is a very straightforward process. So I've just shown you the two methods for connecting to SIS desktop in the cloud. So let me now just provide you a quick overview of the application itself. So when Sys Desktop is launched, you're presented with a number of options. So I can start with a blank map with no data at the bottom there. I can maybe select a predefined uh, map template with ordnance survey background mapping for Great Britain, or a standard template using OpenStreetMap tiles. Or on the left-hand side, I can select a project file that I've been working on recently. If you're not already familiar with Sys Desktop, then on the left hand side, um, we have the list of um, overlays that are available within my project. And on the right hand side, we have the map window where we can view the spatial information. At the top of the application, um, Sys Desktop uses the Microsoft Ribbon interface. So all the functions are organized into separate tabs for easy navigation. The Home tab contains most of your day to day functions that you might need. So you can add an overlay to the map, you can style the overlays, maybe create a thematic map, or use the query builder to perform attribute and spatial queries on your data. There are also map controls for zooming um, and panning on the map. You can also select data and interrogate it, or you can use the measuring tools to measure distances in areas, for example. The Create tab has all your tools that you need to capture new data or edit existing data, whether that be points, lines and polygons, and there's also advanced options available too. The Topology tab has a number of functions for creating your own topological networks, which could be used for routing analysis. And then the Analysis tab, and you, we have different types of geometry functions and analysis you can perform on your data. If you require CAD functionality, then there are many options available here. And under the View tab, you can view all the attribute information in an overlay in a table view, or perhaps view terrain data in 3D. And you can also activate additional windows uh, to use SQL and Python language with Sys Desktop. 
And then the final tab is uh, in Sys Desktop is applications. So CADCOP provides free to download add-ins to extend the functionality of Sys Desktop. And all of these add-ins are pre-installed and available to use for Sys Desktop in the cloud users. As I mentioned previously, each user will be assigned their own login and they'll be able to set their own specific preferences. And this means every user can customize their experience. An example includes customizing the ribbon. So every user can customize the ribbon by turning um, tabs of functionality on and off depending on their requirements. Or well, they can create their own tab and group all the functionality that they need into their own custom tab. All of these user-defined settings are stored in their own sort of, in your own CADCOP profile, which will be persistent between your sessions in the cloud. If you're an existing customer, you'll be familiar with named object libraries, and these are files which store your custom print templates, icons, styles, and feature tables, for example. You can drag and drop these files from your cloud storage space into this desktop when you need them. So if I open uh, Windows Explorer and navigate to my cloud storage space, here I've got a null file called my null file. And for my cloud storage space, I can drag and drop that into this desktop in the cloud. If we now go to the libraries tab, we can now see that I've loaded that null file into this desktop and I can now utilize my custom features such as my print templates for printing. So I've spoken about the interface and how the user experience can be configured on a per user basis, but what about your data and your project files? So this project file includes some base mapping data from the ordinance server. And if you're a member of the PSGA, CADCorp can provide a cloud hosted data service for the premium ordinance survey data. And the benefit of this service is that CADCOP maintains the base mapping data on your behalf. So you don't have the worry and the workload to keep maintaining the data yourself. So I'm going to zoom into the city of Exeter in Devon. And as we start to zoom in a bit closer, we can see the different ordinance survey uh, products that are in this uh, WMS data stack. But when I zoom in uh, close enough, we switch from the premium data served from the web map service um, to the master map topography layer. Now the master map data can be included in the web map service if you simply want it for background mapping. However, CADCOP can also supply a vector service for the master map data. And what this means is I can select a, a feature from master map, but most importantly, I can create and edit my business data accurately if I need to snap to that master map data. If you're not um, a PSGA member, we can still provide a similar service to you using open data available from the Ordnance Survey, which includes the uh, Zoom Stack product. You do not have to use these services if you don't want to. You can still use and manage your own data if this is your preference. For all vector data, whether that be ordinance survey mapping or your own business data, we recommend that you migrate this data into a cloud-hosted spatial database. CADCOR can provide a hosted SQL Server or PostGIS database to host all of your vector data, or we can connect to your own cloud-hosted database instead. Connecting to the database in the cloud is no different to connecting to a local installation. So I'm going to connect to my database in the cloud to load in some of my own mapping data. So through the add overlay wizard, we'll make the connection to PostGIS, and it has remembered my credentials from my previous visit. I, um, want, I want to load in some crime data, so we'll search for that table in my PostGIS database. And then before I add it to the map, I just want to rename uh, the table to crime incidents. So on the left hand side, we can see we've now added that data to the map. And I'm now going to apply a theme to style the data. So we'll set the layer. I'm going to choose an individual value theme based on the, the type of crime. And then once it's found all of the unique values in, in that column, we can then style the data accordingly. So I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. So I'm going to choose a, a circle bold a symbol. For the brushes, um, we're going to select a range of colors from our color brewer. 
And then for the outline, we'll choose a black pen. So I've just connected to my hosted PostGIS database, added some data and applied a theme, just like I would if the software was installed locally. If you still have a requirement to use flat files, every user is allocated 10 gigabytes of cloud storage space. So if you have three users in your organization, you get a combined total of 30 gigabytes of space. And this space can be accessed by all users within your organization so you can still share data between colleagues. This technology supports over 300 different data formats. And if I return to my cloud storage space, I can show you some examples of the formats we support. So in my folder, I've got some data. So I've got some MIDMIF uh, data for electrical charging points. I've got a tab file for the uh, boundary for Exeter. I've got some flood mapping data in shapefile format. And I've got some polling district boundaries in the compressed KML. And for my cloud storage space, I can simply drag and drop that data into this desktop and then use the overlays and add theme options to style the data how I want it to look. You might also want to connect to a web service from another third party to consume data within your project. So in my example, I'm going to add a web service from a local authority. Now this local authority publishes a number of data sets and I'm particularly interested in loading in the controlled parking zone data that they publish. But before I add it to the map, I need to confirm or I need to add it in British, British National Grid. And then we can see on the left hand side, we have now added that layer to the map. And because this data is in the Manchester area, I'm now going to zoom to that data. So I can now see that I'm viewing a third party web map service in the cloud. So it's still really easy to connect to a variety of data formats. Project files or sys workspace definitions can also be shared within your or stored in your cloud storage space. And as I mentioned previously, if your organization has multiple users, you can still share these files and any flat file data amongst these users. And you can open them in Sys Desktop via the file open method, or you can drag and drop the file from your cloud storage space into the application. So if I go back to my cloud storage space, I've got an SWD called Exeter, and again, I can just drag and drop that into the Sys Desktop application and start working with that project file. And if you want to, you can also add an SWD file from your own machine into Sys Desktop in the cloud. And finally, if you're a CAD Core web map user, you can point your cloud hosted web map to the SWD files in your cloud storage space. So that means you can manage and update these files in the cloud and these changes will immediately be reflected in your hosted web map solution, making it easier to manage a desktop and web mapping solution in the cloud. So I've now come to the end of my demonstration and I hope you have found that very useful. And you've seen that the remote um, application in the cloud gives you the same look, feel, and overall experience as if CAD Corpus desktop were installed locally on your machine. I'm now going to pass you back over to Demelza, who will talk about a customer use case and answer any of your questions. Thank you, uh, Simon. Um, yes, over to our use case. Uh, first of all, um, here are a selection of some of our customers who have already moved uh, services to the cloud. Interestingly, what we found to start with was local government was the, the first sector, if you like, to start transitioning to the cloud, then housing associ associations, commercial and now emergency services. So it's now a complete mix of um, organisation types. Now what we're doing at here at CACOP is striving to make our GIS software management as easy as possible um, for, for these customers by reducing the reliance on their generally stretched IT resources. I thought I'd talk specifically today about uh, Colchester Borough Council and tell you about their cloud experience which started in 2017 when the first phase of their um, deployment um, was to deploy web map in the cloud um, 
Um, and that was utilised uh, by their internal um, systems, planning and land charges. Users have access via Salesforce to the core CabCorp uh, Microsoft um, Azure server where WebMap is uh, hosted. Another Azure server provides the background mapping and data services directly to it. And they also had a uh, server providing nightly updates to the central CACORP server for all systems that weren't yet in the cloud. So that was stage one for them. Um, stage two, towards the end of 2018, they kicked off a project to move away from um, flat files um, to using a spatial warehouse hosted and managed by CACORP in the cloud. So that was when we added uh, PostGIS managed service to the central um, cloud hosted instance um, and also on premise CACORP SIS desktop clients in this way. This step made uh, data made sure that data updates were now live and there was less data duplication within the organization and the main driver for them was to get away from using flat files on local service, servers. Culture still literally had thousands of, of tab files that they wanted to um, manage in a better way. And whilst I mentioned um, earlier cloud storage is part of the service and Simon also mentioned it, um, which can be used for flat files, there's 10 gigabytes per, per, per user. Ideally, a spatial database would be used in a, a corporate environment, but there are options there. The final phase um, was to move their CACORPSYS desktop clients into the cloud as well. So um, now they access using um, virtual desktop. Um, as Simon showed you, one of the options available to, to you. Um, and those desktops are managed again on an uh, Azure server, uh, replacing their on-site desktops and leaving this infrastructure that they have today, which is almost in, entirely in the cloud. So options available then. So coming back to the CACOP managed service options for existing CACOPSYS desktop customers, we can mark great to your existing license for the cost of the cloud managed service only. For new customers, we package the software and the cloud managed service together for you to make it a little bit easier. And if you want a trial of um, either of the methods that you've seen today, please um, either contact myself, your account manager, or make a note in the feedback form, which will pop up at the end, and we'll, um, we will organise that for you. So, Simon and I have mentioned nine different benefits of this services so far, which is uh, pretty good. So, um, desktop in the cloud supports IT strategies. There's no on-site installation, so no hardware or resources are required. Um, we're backed by Microsoft Azure guarantees. It's accessible from any device, anywhere, anytime. No further trainings required. We've got full technical support. Cloud storage, map data service, health check and monitoring services are all included. And it's fully extensible with um, the free add-ins that are, are included. There's potential to interface with other cloud environments, on-site systems and databases also. So those are just the benefits we've mentioned so far. There are some more. Um, so number 10 there, um, hardware, software upgrades together with map updates are all included. So you're always on the latest release of desktop and mapping updates if you wish to use them. There are further resilience, backup and disaster recovery options available. Information protection and encryption is provided from SSL and TLS and database uh, administration and monitoring by CACORP also. It's scalable, so from one user to enterprise-wide, there's no minimum or maximum numbers. 
and there's potential for overall cost of ownership to be lowered when compared with, with um, on site. It's also available through G Cloud, which is a popular procurement method, or obviously direct from CareCorp. So hopefully that's given you lots of background information to take away from today. What I'm going to do is just pop to your um, questions and we will run through these for you. So Josh, where do our files get stored? Um, so um, as Simon explained, there's 10 gigabytes of data that can be provided in cloud storage as part of this service um, and uh, there's potential for customers to add a, a database service which is what we would uh, recommend or connect to a spatial database um, on the site so I think Wayne your questions um, similar to that as well so um, Wayne is cloud storage secure so yes um, I mentioned TS SSL and TLS um, as um, security methods um, so all data is stored uh, in the UK also um, on those cloud um, servers. Kiran, will Workload Modeler be available in the cloud? So Workload Modeler is a specialist add-in, um, not one of the free add-ins and um, we're currently testing um, those uh, in the cloud so your account manager which happens to be me will be able to tell you a little bit more um, in the next few weeks um, about those specific add-ins okay i think i've got let's have a look um I'm not a customer, what's the process for ordering? Okay, so myself or one of the, my account management colleagues um, will be in touch with you um, and we can discuss further if needed and provide a quote, which is um, the next step. Obviously, I said, if I, I said earlier, if you don't like um, pricing, um, again, make a note just in the questions here or the feedback form at the end and someone will be in touch with you. Um, and then it's just a case of um, our technical colleagues will uh, progress the setup for you and provide you with the um, access details. Um, Colchester approach their move to cloud in stages. Is this something you would recommend? Um, it's probably worth saying that every customer has approached sort of migrating to the cloud in a slightly different way with slightly different requirements with different priorities. I guess there are advantages to a Big Bang approach. Um, the approach that Colchester took was a more evolutionary approach which allows each stage to be sort of tested and procedures to be developed accordingly. So I don't think there's any right way, although um, our technical services team have a lot of lessons learned so far and our consultants can sort of advise you further based um, on your requirements. Um, Colchester use virtual desktop over browser. Um, do you know why? Um, Colchester specifically have used this for other applications, so it's what their users and IT is specifically used to, hence that was what they chose. Okay, I think we are running out of time for um, today's session. Um, we've got a few more um, questions which um, either myself or my colleague will get back to you um, uh, soon after uh, today's uh, close of the webinar. So if you do have any further questions um, after today, um, please feel free to contact me or your own um, account manager. If um, you have account, an account manager assigned, the general sales contact details are there. And if you'd like to specifically talk to a, uh, myself or a colleague today, there's a check back checkbox on the feedback form when you exit today's where you can actually um, request this.